best way to shoot an action sequence is with the least amount of visual effects you can. It's really try and do something or come up with ideas that you haven't seen before. The action itself, I'm thinking if you can pull it off, it's like absolutely incredible. The more complicated an action scene, the more it requires a coordination between every department. We were concentrating on the car chase in Mexico, and suddenly this whole interior police station set developed. And it was quite a complex piece of geography to put together, because it was done in about five different pieces. So we wanted to join together seamlessly. To actually build this engineering is quite an undertaking. Even when a car hits something at 30 miles an hour, it's still very, very dangerous. It's definitely a kind of high-octane sequence, but at the same time, I think that there are all sorts of elements to it that are unique and interesting. You've never seen an Aston the way we're going to use it as a battering ram in one case, and it was all of us were kind of like, do you know how much this car costs? Being inside an Aston Martin, everyone else was like desperate to drive it, and I was like, they're very comfortable to sit in. <laughs> We're going fast as well, you know? We, we made the set twice as long so we could get up to speed, and we trashed it. You had to get it right the first time. I think the best action scenes start with a kernel of an idea and they evolve. It's one thing to write it, it's a whole other thing to try to execute it, and then when you start trying to execute it, new ideas come out. I've worked with Antoine Lorenzo in the past, and it was just, it was just a little different than anything I'm used to. Oh, come on, man, I'm just a guy who was in the wrong place at the wrong time, that's all. Antoine wanted to start it with Evan coming into this space and you didn't know where he was. <laughs> There's the treadway I know! And then Anton said, I'd like a plow that appears on the front of the car. Uh, and I thought to myself, that's going to be interesting. Hello, old friend. And suddenly this Aston Martin comes blowing through a wall. I was very hesitant to be crashing a brand new Aston Martin through the police station and standing on top of it. There were a lot of kind of gasps on set that day, just me treading all over it. Get in! The car burst through the interrogation wall, which basically for us, we made the breakaway wall, which is made out of soda brick and plaster, so it kind of breaks away in, it, in a kind of, you know, realistic way, so it doesn't dent the car. And then we were like, well, that's nice, but what's chasing it? So we got Bathurst driving this MRAP, which is like those vehicles they used that could get blown up by an IED and survive. So we built an MRAP for ourselves, which was the shape of an MRAP, but we could put weights in it. Yeah. The stunt teams are very, very skilled, and so just blending in with the work that they're doing is really great. Is that a grenade launcher? Something like that. We basically shot for two nights, and we drove both vehicles through glass partitions, through every kind of conceivable piece of furniture. So we made all the columns inside the police station out of the same soda brick, which took months of planning. Then we plastered over the top of that, so it looked real because it was, basically. We planned for two takes, and they got it in one, thank goodness, because it would have taken months to rebuild it. So we're like, OK, so they go through the station, then what? We're like, well, why don't they do a U-turn and go right back through it? And I think one of the most interesting things that happens in the scene is the MRAP is so close behind the Aston. It's like it's going to eat it. It's how far can you place them and where you're shooting it so that the angle feels much tighter than it in fact is. So what we did, we used like 12 cameras positioned strategically within the police station. But then, as we didn't have the actors, we shot six array cameras at the same time in both those vehicles. So we had a total of 24 cameras shooting, and literally we did the whole thing 
in one go. Because we're dealing with cars and reflections are key, then we thought the best thing to do is actually have that footage, basically a 360 degree environment on LED screens and then roll it over the top. It also gives the actors something to drive to. Through a police station. Great, you're driven. Well, can you stop driving through a police station? Because there's cameras pointing out the front of the stunts cars, that's what they're driving, that's what they're seeing. So you, then you get a better performance as well, I think. And then, of course, then the, the, the cars then break out. And then they had the real MRAP, which they used at, at Cardiff. We ended up having to shoot the exterior of this police station in Cardiff. Quite quickly, these cars were kind of turning into a, a volume. We wanted to do a lot of it practically, so to try and close down a major street anywhere is always a problem. And that's where we end up going to Cardiff, because they allowed us to shut down a, a six-lane street in order to do that. So we blew cars up, we put stun guys on joke rigs, and it's all, again, for real. So these are just a multitude of different elements we'll put together. So when you want to do something that is either too dangerous for the actor or something that is just you're pushing physics past its logical thing into what we would call credible physics, that's when you go to CGI. I was always keen that the infinite explosion should be based on sound. So the particle grenade, you know, it's only a tiny little thing. This explosion is like a giant sound wave, and it will just peel through and basically just lift up the cars. I think it's a phenomenal effort. It allows me to get the best possible ingredients to put this thing together. It takes a ton of practice and a ton of logistics. Sometimes the excessive nature of it can feel excessive or it can feel fun. That scene is designed to be the fun version of excess. Once we get up to Scotland, it starts with Sophie Cookson's character, Nora, with a sniper rifle, where we have drones, helicopters, ATVs. You see Bathurst putting on these, these gloves that control this huge holographic gooey. He almost he puts on a piece of music and he conducts. It's something which is beautifully Bathurst, I think. Because it's intercut with the real stuff, that's what makes it work for me. Because we're shooting two units, first and second unit, everybody has to have the same plan in mind. And the more absolutely we're in sync, the better. And this one really needed that. And thankfully, we all had enough time to think through what we all wanted to try to accomplish. I'm a firm believer in shoot as much as you can in camera. Because you can do invisible effects doesn't necessarily mean that you should. And yes, we could go and shoot it all against screen, of course we could. But where's the fun in that, right? It's a great collaboration, challenging the various teams, you know, stunt teams, cars, all these different people, and I think we're coming up with something different. The, the hardest thing with movies nowadays is that, you know, you get told, oh, well, this is something we've not seen before. And I, for us, what we need to do is we just need to go, OK, well, how can we do it differently? And if that is something that, well, OK, well, this was done, but it was done with CG, we're actually going to do this for real. <laughs> As she's running through the forest, all these explosions are going off, and then we have to plan how near we can get the explosions, because obviously the closer we can get, the more, the more visual it looks. All of the stunts are challenging in some way, partly because I've never really done anything like that before. I wasn't really sure how that would all fit together, but Simon Crane is so good at, at, at knowing how to get what he wants in the most efficient way. Well, that's the most important thing with any action sequence. If you're not in with the characters, sort of, what's the point? And it's like, that's where you want to really ring the changes, because it's, it's really them doing it. It comes into a helicopter carrying a jeep that Mark Wahlberg arrives back in. The idea was to have the jeep 
directly underneath the helicopter, and it was quite a powerful helicopter, so the downdraft was like, incredible. And um, we didn't want it, to, Simon didn't want it to wobble around, he had to look as though it was actually just flying down and then landing. So we looked at various options, and the only real one was to set up some tension wires across two cranes. And then we have computerized winches that basically allow the vehicle to run down the wires, and then we can just press a button and it resets again. Help. The Mercs all jump into their special vehicles and come out of tunnels and things in the woods and there's explosions and this and that. But uh, I found myself having more fun than I've ever had when we were in the forest and I finally got behind the wheel of the off-road vehicle. It was like a uh, kid in a candy store time. Graham, we brought specifically on here because if you've ever seen any great action sequence driving-wise, Graham has been involved. He knows how to build the cars. He knows how to make them do what you want. So I ended up with six Can-Ams for the Mercs that all had to be modified and stylized, but uh, it was really hard doing it because it was basically like a swamp when we got there. It was pouring with rain, just the, the mud, the sheer filth and condition shooting that was hard. And then we go into this fight against the mercenaries that all pile out, and it's this unspoken bond between them where they work together. It just seems to flow, you know. He runs out, she refills his gun, but they don't need to communicate this. It's a natural skill set for them. I love that it's Sophie playing this part because we're kind of connecting in that way and we both kind of have a similar approach to the work in that, you know, it's like it's got to happen organically. So phenomenal about this film, really, is the amount of work that's gone into each one of these setups that just really pays dividend in the, in the long run. You know, you want to do something different. Different takes time. And OK, you win some, you lose some. I've got to say, I've got a great team of people working with me, and they did a fantastic job. If anything else, you get to do something that's unexpected. The best action sequences are the ones that are really, truly mapped out every single bit. So when you think about all those different things, each one has to have tremendous levels of execution, but the timing of them have to be very absolute.